All right, we are going to do a test on Castify, and you're going to do a one-point perspective. So I'm going to turn to a fresh page here and walk you through this. Okay. So, if you do not have a ruler, a fold piece of regular paper folded about four times will give you a pretty passable ruler. So, to do an inside perspective of the corner of a room, you still need your horizon line square across the paper. Okay, now I got that a little off. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, I'm going to put my vanishing points out here near the edge of my paper. Step three, I'm going to draw the corner where the two walls meet. Okay, so that's step one, two, and three. Step four, I'm going to put my straight edge on my vanishing point, the top of my corner, and draw this little piece there. Okay, starting to look like wall and ceiling, other vanishing point, top of the wall, and here. So see, we've got ceiling, this piece, this wall's coming to this vanishing point, this wall's coming to this vanishing point. Then I'm going to do down here. Okay, vanishing point, end of the line. Vanishing point, end of the line. Okay, I'm going to straighten that up for you to see. I'll get the webcam here. All right. So, there we go. I'm learning, learning. Okay, so it's very important that your verticals are parallel to the edge of the page. That is the big mistake many, many make. Okay, I'm going to scoot that back down here. And I know I'm going to be working on a Castify easel this weekend to make drawing for you on here a little bit easier. Okay, we're going to add a door right in here. Okay, so I'm going to if I've got a corner to look at, I'm going to look at how far up the wall my door goes. The door should go across the horizon line because it's the same as your eye level line. So I'm straight upright on the vanishing point and on the top of the door. Drawing along that way. And then another square up to the paper. Look to make it parallel. All right. Now, so that's how our door is looking. We're going to erase because we really only need our vanishing lines, but we need to know that that horizon line is in there. Okay. Now, say I want to make this a half door, I can do some things to this. First thing I think I'm going to do to it, I'm going to find middle by drawing from corner to corner and corner to corner. And I'm doing that pretty lightly so that it's easier to erase. And I don't want to make heavy pencil lines. Okay, so this where these cross is the middle of my door. So if this is a Dutch door, which I'm doing to keep myself from being bored, it's divided in half. And, um, okay. So we're going to add a little bit of molding trim around this door. So do you see where that line goes across that here and here? And to my vanishing point for that this part because it's a parallel. 
because things look smaller when they're further away from you, that's what the casing would look like on this. Now, if it is a thick casing that sticks out on the floor, it might have a shadow line here. It might have an extra line. You have to look at what you have in front of you. I'm going to give that some thickness. And this little piece of line up here comes there. Okay, so now I've got that casing sticking out from the wall. Give that a little bit right there. Okay, now, um, let's make that, let's make a four pane window up there. Okay, so this is going to be a solid part. This is going to be glass. So I'm going to come above and make a place where that comes apart. And we'll have a little piece stick out there. My mother-in-law used to have a Dutch door on her kitchen and I thought that was the coolest thing. Okay, so here I've got this with, I already have this from this corner to this corner. I'm going to come this corner to this corner, and I'm going to make what's called a mullion here. I'm going to darken this piece here. And then where those two lines are crossing. Then I have one, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of my, just give that like it's a really smooth, shiny texture. And darken those pieces of wood and you can see there how I used that Xing principle to get this to look like this is going back in space that these get smaller as they go okay let's do a shelf over here with some coats hanging on it so I'm going to come to my vanishing point there and draw a line for the top of it. Drop that straight down for the edge of it. Draw the bottom of it. And draw the other edge. Okay, so if this is a coat rack, it's going to have some thickness to be sturdy. Now these little lines should come from a vanishing point. From a vanishing point. And this one being that it's a comes along there. Okay, so I've got a nice thick board there. And it's a little hard to do upside down. So if I have a shelf out from that to set some things on. That's coming from the vanishing point. And this is. And again, I need some thickness to that to make it be a board. All right, that's not too bad. Okay, now I want to put some pegs on here. And I need to find my middle. Okay, so I'm going to come here. There's middle. And go. These are going to be erased, so they're light. That line's going to be where the pegs are going to be. 
So you see I have half of my X right here. I'm going to come here and divide here and then line up, line up. And that gives me one, two, three places to place the peg. So I'm going to mark where they're there and then I'm going to put those pegs come to my vanishing point. Okay. And they should get bigger as they're closer to you. And we're just going to do simple round pegs like that. Okay, we can hang the dog's leash off of the peg with the snap for the dog, take it for a walk. We can hang a hat. Now that needs to be an oval. And that little thing that's on the back of a ball cap would be hanging something like that. We can put the box of dog food up top here. And being that it's a box, it goes in those perspective rules of to the vanishing point. So I've got a box up here. All of this makes visual sense. And that is how you set up an interior perspective. Thank you. I hope this works.